Now, it might not come as a surprise, but London has been named the worst place for traffic in the whole of the UK. A survey has found that despite it costing £10 a day to drive through, Westminster has the slowest rush hour speed at 10.06 miles per hour. Perhaps more unexpected was that St Albans was named the second worst city for delays. Drivers there are on average caught in jams for 8.9 minutes. That's on top of a 30-minute journey. And Thursdays, rather than Monday or Friday, were found to be the worst for rush hour congestion. Well, to discuss this and what to do about it, I'm joined by Jenny Jones from the Green Party and Rupert Lipton from the motoring group National Motorist Action Group. Thank you both for coming in to speak to me. I've got a magic wand. The Green Party is in power. We've got this problem of congestion. What are you going to do about it? Well, the problem is the Mayor of London actually did try to reduce traffic, or rather speed traffic up, and he did that by changing lights and that sort of thing. That meant, actually, that we got more cars, more congestion, more pollution. So what the Green Party says is there are two things we can do. Uh, a more sophisticated, more flexible system, pay-as-you-go for actually driving in London. What do you mean, pay-as-you-go? Well, for example, if you want to drive on a main road... Uh, at a very busy time, say during the school rush hour or the rush hour itself, then you pay more. And if you want to come in at a quieter time, you pay less. So a much more flexible system. And the other option, of course, is it is much more efficient to have a lot of cyclists on the road. They take up less space, they don't take up um, seats on public transport, no pollution, and you get a fitter population. OK, Jenny, pay more. We've got the congestion charge already. We know that's going to go up soon, uh, later on this month. Is that the way to deal with this? Well, look, I think um, the idea of more intelligent traffic management is great if you can do it. But the fact of the matter is, what is behind the reduction in traffic speeds is uh, counts, London-wide councils with the ultimate self-licking lollipops of traffic departments who say, look how terrible the traffic is, we must do a scheme. They do a scheme, things get worse, and then they say, look how terrible the traffic is, we must do a scheme. And the reality is that we have hundreds of acres of empty road space, roads that have been closed, roads that drivers can't use because of the ideology of traffic planners who put in place uh, dead ends. But in central London, we've got roads that are jammed, we've got cyclists being killed, we've got people going at really, really slow, slow seeds at a major capital city in the world. We need to do something, don't we? Well, surely we should use the tarmac, the infrastructure that we've got efficiently. And let me tell you, as an ex-professional driver, somebody, uh, the kind of person who's never consulted on this matter, that even in central London, where the, the main roads are absolutely bunged up, all the roads that 20 years ago you could quite happily use... Now, I'm not talking residential streets. This is central London. It is a city. All these roads have been selfishly and foolishly bunged up and, and close to use. And we have to ask why society has sleepwalked into this crazy idea that cars are bad. Now, I'll accept we need management of cars, management of traffic. Cars cause air lanes. pollution. They're not great, are they? Well, actually, the air pollution coming out of cars has reduced and reduced and reduced. And I'm sure even Jenny will accept that compared to the global environmental problems, uh, cars in London, passenger cars in London, are a small contributor to Rupert the problem. Rupert and Jenny, we've got a very busy programme. Thank you very much. Sorry to bring that to a close so soon. Thank you.